Hey guys and welcome back to the channel and to the first video and first devlog for 2021. Before we begin I want to give a massive thank you to everybody who supported the channel throughout December. We just recently hit 100 subscribers and I think at the time of posting this video we're already up to like 124 which is just amazing. I didn't expect the growth on this channel to be so quick and I really can't thank you guys enough. What I want to do now that we've hit this 100 subscriber milestone is do a quick Q&A video with all of the guys who are subscribed because I've started getting a few more questions over on Instagram about how I got to learning Unity and how I got started in game development, what kind of things we're going to do in the game, etc, etc. So if you've got any questions for me, post them down in the comments. I'm going to be doing this Q&A video probably sort of in mid-February, so a month from now. If you leave a comment down below on this video or down below on any videos up until that point, leave me a question and I will be answering them in that video. So let's talk about what we're getting up to today. It's been the first week back after having been in the situation where my entire project has gone down the drain because of Unity corruptions. I can inform you now, I have set up a GitHub repository for my work so that I can keep everything up to date, keep everything backed up somewhere so that if anything goes wrong either on Unity's end or if I completely mess up the code somehow, I can revert back to an earlier stage where things are in a good place and I can work with it from there. To ease myself into work for the start of the year, I've decided to take a step back given this opportunity to kind of rethink about what I'm doing with this game project and how to implement things properly. I've taken a lot of time to plan out what the game is, and part of that has been coming up with a name which I will be revealing at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around until then to find out what this new project is going to be called. Another part of this has been thinking about the general vibe of the game and what the game's going to stand for. I've had conversations with my friends that I'm making this game to play with in some aspects in the past about what type of backstory the game should have, if any, and one of the main things that we sort of discussed, even if it was as a joke at the time, was having a dark backstory or some dark kind of lore behind it, and I really love that kind of idea. The idea that I have for this game is some air of mystery and the idea is that this tower or possibly a mountain now will be this elusive kind of area where at the peak you can supposedly find ultimate glory or the thing that you most desire, deep truth or anything like that. And I don't want to go into any spoilers because like I say I've done a load of planning and I'm going to interweave all of this lore into the game when you actually go to play it. But this kind of stuff is stuff that I've taken into consideration that's made me think a lot about how the actual playstyle of the game should be, especially taking into consideration how that proof of concept that I had before the game broke. All of that, I'm taking different elements from the play feel of that, the art styles of games I enjoy, different theoretical laws of uh, different cultures that I'm interested in, other games that I've enjoyed playing such as Hollow Knight, Alto's Adventure, um, all sorts of games like this and I'm really thinking about the direction I want to take this game in. And that brings me onto the topic of today's learning point in this video which is predominantly around scope, overscope and scope creep. So let's talk about these things. So first of all let's talk about scope. Scope is effectively the size of a task or project. Now that's very kind of layman. It's, it's a little bit more than just the size of something, but for the purposes of this video, we'll talk about it as being the size of a project, how much this project covers the kind of, you know, inner workings of the project and the work that it will take to do. In the world of software, and certainly in the world of planning, you have the concept of scope as a way of being able to think, okay, this is what the end goal is, this is how long it's going to take, this is the chunks we can break it up into. So, having a detailed plan at the start of development is always a good position to be in, because it means you can accurately gauge the scope of the game, get those time predictions pretty accurate, and be able to make decent progress, and keep more or less to the schedule that you originally had planned. But, as is inevitable with any project, you will likely encounter scope creep. 
Scope creep, like I say, I think is something that plagues any game project or any software project or really any project whatsoever. It's the introduction of unpredicted bugs or new features, like for example, if this channel blew up even more and I got loads of suggestions for a feature that loads of people wanted, I might have to consider, actually, this would be a smart idea to implement in the game. So that then is scope creep. It's added a new feature that I need to consider in my time mapping plan. So this scope creep, eventually it can, it, can, it can grow and grow the project, make it bigger, make it take longer, which eventually leads to overscoping. And that is simply just making the project too big, having a project that will take too much time, too much effort, with not enough resources, and eventually cause you to burn out and give up. And I think scope creep and uh, the concept of overscoping is the type of thing that causes game projects never to be finished. It's probably the main reason or main culprit for why loads of people never end up reaching the end of the game goal that they want to reach. They've got this idea for an amazing game that they want to make and they don't realise games take a long time and it's an important lesson to learn whether you learn it the easy way or the hard way by listening to someone telling you this game is going to take you possibly a couple of years, maybe a few. Uh, Thomas Brush, for example, spent I think five years working on Pinstripe you can go and watch his brilliant video where he discussed these kinds of things. I'll put a link in the description or on the iCard up in the top, and you can go check that out. But certainly the hard way to learn it is similar to me, having these massive scope projects and thinking, yeah, I can make this really quickly, and then not, <laughs> not making it really quickly. And it's a bummer, uh, because you expect to get results quicker than that. And certainly when you can hit a brick wall where you don't know what you're doing or you don't know how to code this or you don't know how to draw that or you don't know how to animate this, that and the other, you can really get to a position where you just think, there's no point, I'm never going to make the game I want to make. So this kind of mindset is one that you really have to get out of if you want to be a successful indie game developer. And part of that comes into being smart about what you do and mainly that planning like i said before and reviewing of that planning so my week of development for this week has been taking the time to review my plan for what this game is think about where i actually want to take it thinking about the art style i want to give it and the general mood of the music me being someone who can write music and understands music theory and the types of moods that different instruments and sounds create i want to write the music for my game and having a very kind of I like to learn how to do things and almost being a bit of a control freak about the way I do things as well I want to make sure that I am keeping that control and keeping the vision in line with what I want it to be so I've taken the decision to do everything myself going back to my point though the fact that I've decided to do everything myself means I can be very flexible with my plan which also means I need to be reviewing my plan more frequently I need to make sure that you keep that vision in mind and that you can easily recenter if the plan changes or if something happens in life where you just don't have the time to commit so much to that plan that plan is flexible so that you can spend less time working on it and still get things done or you can remove bits that aren't as important or add bits in that are more important than other bits and you know it's a trade-off so reviewing that plan on a regular basis is a good idea and having had a month since I first planned this and then reviewing it again I think probably a month is a good period of time for me to be reviewing the plan and with this plan review I've now come to realize my game scope is much larger I know I'm going to continue with this and get it done eventually, even if now I'm predicting that it probably won't be until December next year, which if you've watched any previous videos or previous live streams, I originally said I might want to have this done by December this year. So let's talk a little bit about some of the other features that I've decided to put in this game. So the first thing is the name of the game. I've decided to name the game Echo, much like the character from League of Legends. Now. I must emphasize it's got no relation to League of Legends at all. The name Echo comes from the Greek mythology. Echo is a nymph in Greek mythology who was cursed by Hera after finding out that Zeus had been doing questionable things with the nymphs on the mountain. And the name comes from uh, where I assume 
uh, just from brief readings on it, that the, the curse causes Echo to repeat uh, or mirror everything said or actioned towards her back and uh, this then happens when she falls in love with Narcissus who I assume the name is where the term narcissist comes from because as he falls in love with her he is effectively falling in love with himself. I want to kind of interweave these kind of dark themes into the lore of the game and so a lot of the backstory and elements is going to be around this kind of memory loss arc this character that's stuck at the bottom of this tower and just has a calling to climb to the top so the name has yet to evolve but as a base baseline it will be project echo and that's what i'll be naming the videos now rather than roguelike devlog it'll be project echo devlog Eventually also I will be moving on to implementing boss fights in the game, starting off with this first area which is going to be known as the undergrowth and is the first level in the game. I've got ideas for having multiple bosses in a certain world and it will pick randomly between those, much in the way that roguelikes do generally, random selection, and we'll cover all of the process of developing that in a future devlog. That about brings me to the end of what I wanted to talk about in this video. I know it's been a kind of different one again today, but I didn't have much in terms of tangible development or progress on the game that I could show you, so I figured it made more sense to just have a time lapse of the art development in the background and talk a bit about where the project's going to be going and what I've been doing from a planning point of view, because planning is just as important as the development itself, especially if you want a project to be successful. I want to say a big thank you again to anybody who's subscribed already. If you aren't already subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a thumbs up on the video and let us know in the comments what you thought, give us any feedback so that we can make the videos better in future. And again, leave us a question in the comments if you want to know anything about the channel, how we got started, how we made our visuals, anything about the game or anything else generally, just let us know in the comments and we'll stick it in the Q&A. Thanks very much guys, that's all for this video, so until the next one, cheers.